This is my follow-up video for the longer orange 4K resin printer. But before we get into today's video, I want to give a quick shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. You guys are so awesome because you make this channel what it is and are supporting all of the work that I am able to provide through my channel. Also, I want to share with you about the GGGG for this past month. Each month, Bob the Beholder picks some of my Patreon supporters to receive gratitude gifts. And for this past month of June of 2022, Bob the Beholder picked Cliff T to receive the Dynamod Dungeon Starter Set. Brian O and Cyrus Z received the Dungeon Lab All-In Kickstarter Pledge. JJA received the Dungeons and Lasers Encounters Pledge. Agent Graves received the Intermediate Pledge for the upcoming Snap Ships Kickstarter. Kim G, Thomas H, and Jason K are each receiving a 3D printable fantasy NPCs core set plus stretch goals. And then finally, John K is receiving $100 to go towards the Fantasy Forest Kickstarter. Use the links below to go to my Patreon page to see what this next month's GGGGs are going to be for July of 2022, as we will be populating that list as the month goes along. A couple of weeks ago, I did an unboxing video of this longer orange 4K mono that was sent to me by Longer. And I had an opportunity to be able to run it and make some prints. And in this video, I'm gonna be doing a comparison between the quality of these prints with my Chidi Shadow 5.5S. I made a video of that a couple of years ago. If you wanna check that out, make sure to go here. But I was really curious to see what the difference would be between the first generation printers and now a 4K mono version and whether or not there was a noticeable difference between those two prints and how much of a difference it would be. Is it worth it to upgrade from a first generation printer or even a second generation printer to have the features or the print quality of these 4K screens? So what I'm gonna do is switch over to my camera view so that we can close in on some of these miniatures and see what the comparison is between the two. And most of the models that I used for these tests are the 3D printable NPCs. That Kickstarter is gonna end really, really soon, so you only have a few more days if you do wanna jump in on that. If you didn't see that original video where I do walk you through the Kickstarter pledges, go ahead and click here, but make sure to use the link below to go and jump on that pledge if you really like the models that you see here. Also, after unboxing, I did mention in my last video that I did purchase a Wham Bam Flex Plate, which is something that I use on all of my resin printers because it just makes removing the prints a lot easier where I'm not scraping up the build plate and it just protects that as well as just being able to flex pieces off is really handy. So after doing that, I was able to level it at the first pass. It wasn't that difficult. And one of the things that I really like about the longer is instead of what I had to do with the Shadow 5.5S where I needed to print out a little spacer. Because the build plate is adjustable up and down, I didn't need to print out a separate piece to make sure it didn't crash through the screen down here at the bottom. But I was able to do the initial test print. I chose to print out the longer little logo here and it turned out fine. And that is pre-loaded with the settings onto the USB drive that comes with the machine. I didn't print out any of the other test pieces that are on there. Just wanted to get it as close as possible. After this was successful, I was, I did print out these two test pieces, these cones to make sure my exposure times were correct, as well as this little city. Again, links in the descriptions below. I find these tests to be really handy when you're setting up your resin printers. So let's go ahead and check out the comparison with the quality of these prints. And then I printed a bunch of stuff and the comparison really, uh, the common miniature is this guy right here. You can really tell from the Chidi that the features are, you know, really good. And any person who sees this painted up on, and on the board wouldn't be able to tell that this was 3D printed from just a regular uh, production quality miniature from a company that was made in hips plastic so definitely is decent so let's see how much of a difference there is between this and the longer overall it is pretty hard to tell but i will say where you can tell the differences is check out the teeth 
and I know that it's really hard to see and I apologize because I don't have one of those microscope uh, cameras but you can tell that there is more definition in the teeth with the longer version and the other area that you can really tell is on the backs where see the line right here that's just much more defined and you can see more detail so in terms of the XY resolution, it does make a difference with the 4K version as it is uh, two and a half times more detailed than the Chidi. But again, look at how close you have to look in order to see some of those features. Now here's a big question. What is the difference on the longer between the regular 0.05 height resolution versus the 0 0.035. Is there a lot of difference? And I would say you can see some um, higher resolution with the figure on the right. But again, once you put paint on these, it, anyone would be hard pressed in figuring out the differences. But again, you are going to get some greater definition. Uh, you can see it in the face. And now you can really tell with the teeth that the higher resolution on the right does make a difference. And the other area is if you look on the foreheads, I'm not sure, 100% sure if you can see this, but you can see some of the layer lines on the forehead of these models. Layer lines are going to be the same between these two because they're printed at 0 0.05 millimeter height on the z-axis. And then check it out, check out the forehead here when we did it at 0 0.035. So that does make a difference. So I think objectively there definitely is a qualitative and detailed difference be with the higher resolution. But again, honestly, who is looking at miniatures this close? More realistically, on the tabletop, you're looking at these minis from this far of a distance. This is about a foot distance uh, from my eyes and no one is really going to be able to tell uh, what the differences are going to be. But if you are entering a contest or if you are needing the highest possible quality detail then I do think that the 4K is worth it. But if you're like me who is speed painting and trying to get as many models on the table as possible. I mean, this is still definitely super high quality. No one is gonna complain about this. And and look at this, this is interesting. So this is supposed to be a butcher knife. For some reason, on the Chidi, it actually, the supports actually didn't fail, but on the longer, you can see here, it did fail. That uh, section of the butcher knife did fail. And that also happened here too. So I would have to go back and reinforce that to make sure that the butcher knife came out the way it was supposed to be. I am printing a lot faster because the exposure time for this is 14 seconds. Um, and all of these have Atlas support. So I'm using a higher burn-in than what is typically needed. But because the Atlas supports are so thin, it is a longer burn-in time. And for this, it's 14 seconds. And for... Um, this one, it was uh, three and a half seconds per layer. And then finally, this was three seconds per layer. Let's look at some more pieces here. So this is just the table furniture. This is off of the Chidi and this is off of the longer. Both of these are at 0 0.05 because for furniture, I don't really need the details that I might have with the miniatures. But again, no one, I think, would be able to tell which is on a 2K printer and which one is on a 4K printer. They both look really really good and this is fairly close up obviously on the table it's going to be this far away no one is going to notice the difference here is some larger pieces again left is cheaty the right is longer at 0 0.05 millimeter height and again just a great amount of detail on both uh, this was printed on 0 0.035 so higher detail and you really can't see any print layer lines here's the same chair printed out with the Chidi the longer at 0 0.05 
and then the longer at 0 0.035. Honestly, if I were to drop this, I would not be able to tell which one was which. They all look pretty much the same. And I can't really tell the difference between the three of these. Definitely doesn't matter if you print at 0 0.05 versus 0 0.035. So I'd like to ask you um, which one of these was printed on the Chidi, which one was on the longer at 0 0.05, and which was on the longer 0 0.035. Can you really tell which ones were from which printer at which setting? Probably not, but this middle row here was on the Chidi at 0 0.05, these two were on the longer at 0 0.05. And then these two, the bard and the barman, is at 0 0.035. So that's pretty much it. I think that definitely there is a noticeable, especially an XY difference with the 4K mono screen that's found on the longer. But as I mentioned, is it worth it to upgrade your machine? And I would say definitely not. If you have a good working 2K machine, first generation 2K machine, there really isn't any reason to upgrade. And I think the difference between a more modern 2K machines and the 4K is even less different, especially the mono 2K screens. So at the end of the day, unless you are a pro painter that is going to be submitting these pieces in a contest, a painting contest, I don't think it's really worth the idea of upgrading. Now, if you are looking for a resin printer for the first time, I would suggest getting a mono screen because that is going to lower your print time significantly. So one of the benefits of the longer was that the exposure times are at three and a half seconds per level versus the 14 seconds on my shadow. So that is almost a third of the time that I am printing on this. And it's even capable of faster printing than that. I didn't experiment too much. And because I don't need to speed print stuff, I just basically use the stock settings that are available. But if that's an issue for you, definitely getting the mono is worth the price increase versus just an LCD screen. And if you're really looking for Z-axis stability, the dual rods on this keeps this rock solid. The only complaint that I have of this design is that, that the resin vat is held down by these removable thumb screws. I wish that it was attached because it would be easy to drop these accidentally into the vat. But other than that, um, I think overall this is a solid machine with a solid build. And I chose to use Chi2 Box as my slicer. I didn't use the longer version and that worked out fine. Ultimately, if you are in the market for a resin printer, I think you do have a lot of cheap options, but definitely if you want the higher quality of a 4K mono printer, this longer definitely is a good machine. And use the links below to use my affiliate link if you are interested in purchasing this. If you like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button, like the video, and stay tuned as I am going to be doing more prints, my growing Zombicide Village, as well as my City of Furwood buildings. That's going to be coming out in the future, as well as more resin prints of my Lizardman army from One Page Rules. Happy printing, happy gaming, we'll see you next time.